will be treated with a blast of cultural fusion and music feast. I feel that their music is wacky, funny, and sometimes almost romantic. Okay, so their artistic work, both visual uh, creation and music, reflect their personal uh, personality and the mixture of global culture. So, before we start the screening, as usual, on behalf of the Center of Taiwan Studies, I would like to express our thanks for the support that we have always received uh, from the Ministry of Culture and a generous donation from Dr. Samuel Ying. Without this support, we would not have been uh, able to put on this series of events. So now, without further ado, let's start the film. Um, and for every red traffic light, you wait one minute for 
one and a half minutes. Let's say 200 scooters. So it's like a scooter race. So you're kind of waiting in the traffic, like, which one's going to win? Which one's going to win? Uh, and then, you know, they all accelerate fast. So that's, that was one thing. But I think one of the best things was the, the kind of the culture of eating out with friends as well. And um, so it's just a really nice social thing. Whereas in England, uh, everything closes by five or six in Bristol. <laughs> in Taiwan, people are saying, you want to meet up for dinner? And we're thinking, oh, it's a bit late for that. <laughs> no, it's, you know, open until two o'clock in the morning. Or you go to night markets and it's just got rude with us. And that was fantastic. We loved it. We had a funny boy out of the Um, yeah, I think uh, one, one really positive thing um, was the family, the, the importance of family seems to be really strong. Uh, and a lot of our friends will still live at home, even when they're you know, um, up to 13 or beyond, they still live with their parents. Um, which uh, for me is really comforting because uh, I still live with my parents. <laughs> Really helping to enter the culture. Was there a family like that for you? 
Uh, for me, yes. I, I lived with a, a family in Taiwan. Um, and that was really special, uh, apart from really helping my language course, because I had to practice them every day. Um, they were a youngish couple, uh, and they had two children during the three years that I was there. So uh, I was the, the uncle of the children. <laughs> Uncle was the first English word that both of them learned, so that was a real privilege. I was very lucky as well because I um, was looking for flats on the internet there, and as an English person, you probably know that's pretty difficult. Um, if you don't know the city at all, it'd be like turning up in London and thinking, okay, let's just look on, and you, know, you don't know what you're looking for. And one of my friends said, oh, just, just ask us, and I was too embarrassed, you know, maybe a little bit English. I was thinking, I don't want to bother her. I don't want to Maybe it's not polite, maybe I'll say the wrong thing. And I just remember after looking at loads of flats, she said, Why didn't you call me? Just come and live at my friend's house. <laughs> and uh, we did that, and it was much cheaper and much better because, like you say, she adopted me as well. <laughs> and we walked into her house, and um, it was just all CDs. And she was a massive, massive music fan. So she was like my professor in uh, Taiwanese music education. <laughs> and so every night we'd sit there and she'd be like, this is all right, this is all good. <laughs> 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 so this would say, you know, all these different bands, so not just the current ones, but also the old ones. Um, and, um, and then she started to take me to concerts to see these guys. So I kind of saw everyone in the time we would see, um, almost everyone. Um, and it was amazing, I loved it. It was like being a, a small toddler, kind of discovering <laughs> music. Um, because I had not known any of the names, or Jay Chow, or all sorts of different um, artists, or even um, I was at least Soda Green and like the different independent bands. So, yeah, first question. Yes, please. Uh, when you live in Taiwan, which city do you stay? You stay in Taipei or Kaohsiung for most of the time? We stay in Taipei, but we, we got the opportunity to go all around the island. So, we were very lucky actually. Lots of our Taiwanese friends said to us, Hey, you've been to more places than I have. <laughs> <laughs> Any kind of thing, yeah. That's, that's fine because in the UK they've been to more places than we have. That's right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think, um, I think yeah, Taipei and Gaochong were two of the places that we hung out most. Um, we had a real privilege once uh, of going right up into the mountains to yes. uh, a place. It, it was a, a tribe called Xinyichang Wu Luo. Uh, it was like an Aboriginal tribe right up in the mountains of Taiwan. And the idea, it was uh, a teacher from a school was taking the students there for like a, a weekend camp or, or during the holidays or something anyway. They invited us to go uh, to teach some music classes. And, and so we went and, you know, I was teaching drums and Jeff was teaching guitar and I think Ben uh, was teaching some singing. Um, and it was really fun. And then it got to the, the concert part where we played a concert and, and then we just got the guys, okay, sing along with this. And then they sang along and it's like, wow, they don't do any teaching, they're <laughs> super talented at uh, music. Uh, it was really um, a really special experience meeting a completely different side of Taiwan that we never, uh, you don't see in the cities. And also even just taking the various different buses that we had to get all the way up into the mountains. Um, we can see some of the damage from uh, landslides and, and typhoon damage that was still kind of being fixed. Uh, which again showed another side of Taiwan that you know, if you stay in the cities you just see it on TV or on the news or something. Um, so again that I think that brought home kind of reality to us of some of the uh, extreme uh, weather events that happened there as well. We had to take four buses for that one. That was really funny because the first bus was right from Taipei or New York Station. And then we got to I think Nantong and had to go to Ubuntu and then had to go Ubuntu into the mountains. And the more, the further like into the mountains that we got, we kind of wait for the bus at the bus stop. We'd be the first people there. The bus would arrive and everybody else would get on. We were last on the bus. So British. I know, yeah, but not. We didn't know how to do it. We just fight. What's the style of the army? Well, the thing was that the, the, um, the tribe that we were going to, the road had been washed away. Oh, that's right. So there was no road. Uh, so the teacher from the school who was organizing the 
event, he said, uh, just get off at a stop, it's just gone by the roadside next to a bridge. <laughs> yeah, that was, that was our, uh, our time. And so we did, and we got off, and we were just looking around at the mountains and the scenery, thinking, I wonder if we're in the right place. Uh, but sure enough, it was. So I was very pleased with myself for that one. <laughs> Your hit on YouTube, Transition, and that song, uh, Sorry My, my Time Is Not Good, is, is so good because I was looking for teaching Chinese some based, um, for beginning songs, but most of them are Chinese songs, people singing Chinese, but you foreigners singing Chinese. <laughs> it's such a character for beginners. So, what is your experience of learning Chinese language? Um, well, we kind of, when we first got to Taiwan, we thought, quite excited about what was going to because we've got the environment now. Um, but actually, that wasn't the case because everybody's English was so good, so they just spoke English to us. Um, so we thought, well, you know, we want to keep doing music, but maybe we should go and learn some Chinese at the university as well. So we did, we studied some classes, and that really, really helped us. And for me, one of the most difficult things is the tones. Mm. Obviously, you, know, you can say a lot of wrong things by getting the wrong tones. <laughs> and uh, with music, it was different. For me, it felt mm. you could memorize the word first, and the melody helped me to remember lots yeah. of things. So, um, yeah, I just started to play with like the simplest phrases that I, I learned that day, and made tunes out of them. Mm. Um, so I had lots and lots of other songs that I haven't really so just silly things, you know, about... Like what? Well, there was, <laughs> there was one day, um, and this is really stupid, so oh, you like can that. see why we didn't release it, but uh, one day we had a practice, a music practice, it was Monday, and I noticed every Monday I would just look at, like, me, and then him, and then they just show my every Monday we don't shave. Oh. And I don't know what. It's like maybe we're so busy over the weekend playing concerts and things. And it gets the money, so I kind of like it. Xing Qi, we are one. So I thought maybe it should become a tradition that everyone that goes to shape. Just silly little things like that, where I kept forgetting what shape it was. Because I made a little tune like that, and I never forgot it. Yeah. I'm sorry that we are actually run out of time because we are getting into the next phase of this event, uh, that's their concert. Mm -hmm. So uh, maybe we give them a few minutes to get ready sure. and, and, and let's give them another round of And um, I think our band's ready. So please welcome them and with the greatest enthusiasm you can hear. <laughs> Brilliant, thank you everyone. Good evening. Well, it's great to see you all here. We're really excited. Um, we're going to sing a song straight away, which is Qian Jing, Olympic Dream. So, uh, I hope you enjoy this one. One, two, three, four. Show good. 
心跳，叫你唱一首。
dance along. Any yeah. dancers? Yeah. You can dance sitting down, I'm sure, as well. Just a little bit of you. Very cool dancing. Okay. One, two, three, four. Sing a song called Don't Wish You or John Wonder. Oh. <laughs> Can you sing with us too? Okay. That'd be great fun. <laughs> Although I'm sure your Chinese is better than mine. <laughs> I think it would just look funny. Here we go. One.
掌声鼓励一下，就是我们的名手
concerts that we played in Taiwan that kind of gave us a really big shock. And this was one time where we went to um, Ding and we played in this, like, this building that was on the fifth floor. So this is in Taipei. And um, so it's not really high, but it's quite high. And uh, halfway through the, the song, a, a little bit like that song then, I was playing a solo, and everyone screamed, and I was like, wow, this is a great audience. <laughs> wow, I must be on fire, you know, playing really great, great music. And uh, after the song finished, there's, there's a kind of nervous atmosphere. And I thought, oh, why? And I, I looked around at the other two guys, and they, they said, oh, uh, did you feel it? And I said, feel what? Thank God we're still alive. And he said, thank God we're still alive. And it was a big earthquake while we were playing. <laughs> because I was playing a solo, I didn't realize. So, so I was there. Like, yeah, and I looked up and the lights were still swinging and he almost fell off his chair on the drums because he was like swinging around so much. Yeah, it was crazy. Um, <laughs> so my solo wasn't that great. <laughs>
this one is a friend of ours helped us to write lyrics for this song. Um, it's a really good friend called Wing, Law and Yu. Um, in fact, he actually released a mini album about two months ago, which is, is really good, called... What's it called? <laughs> Tian... Eh? Called... Called... Uh, called Tian Ren Shen. Uh, the Gudan is his main single, anyway. Uh, if you listen to his music, usually the people playing instruments are us, and if you listen to our music, we've got three or four songs where he's helped to write lyrics. So we, we like... Um, that kind of collaboration, cross-cultural collaboration, is really enriching, I think. So uh, this song is called Haika, and it's the song that we came up with the, the music and the idea for it. And we said, Wing, help us to put this down in proper lyrics. Um, so I don't know if you want to stand up and dance, or if you want to sit down and enjoy yourselves. Both are okay, but... Uh, yeah, this song is, a, is called Haika, it's more of a rock song. And also it has a, has a video on YouTube as well, so if you... Search on YouTube or on Yuku. iTunes has it as well. <laughs> yeah, in fact, you can find our music most places. Oh, well, yeah, so. So, yeah, feel free. In fact, Xiaomi. After this song, then I think we should take a picture with everyone together for our little. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. All right, guys. Yeah, let's, Why don't we stand up? Yeah, let's stand up. Woohoo! Yeah, we didn't. Yeah, we'll go to the camera. Rock it. Rock it. Don't 